So you take uh, one of your flexible steel wires, which is just one here, put the other one away, and um, you wrap the end about one centimeter in. So I'm wrapping the end of the um, flexible steel wire using a wispy, tiny wispy um, bit of the wool, one centimeter. And with this one, you don't need to be so um, precise, but you can you can just bend the end of that wire in now. So you're trapping the wool. So whatever happens, whatever you're building up on there, that, that ball of wool for the head will not come off. And then you continue wrapping the wool around it. What I do is, and I've, 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 um, I hold my finger roughly to where um, I don't want the wool to go further down the wire so that um, I don't suddenly end up with the wool slipping down. I want it to really be focused and concentrated on the very top. And then you add a little bit more. Same as before, you, um, um, or same as always, I should say, you wrap the wool in the same direction. Keep building up the layers. And with these fairies, they have actually got quite small heads. So you um, you can stop this down before now, but it's no bigger than two centimeters. So take your eco wool mat. If you've not seen our eco wool mats, they come in all of our kits now. You take the label off, obviously. It just tells you what you need to do, which I'm telling you now. You have got a hessian um, side. Um, so some of the wool mats are slightly different. Um, you might, we, we, they, they've just come out different from the manufacturers. Um, in any case, you never needle felt onto the hessian. You always felt onto the wool top. So even if you had it that way, that would be fine too, as long as you don't felt onto the hessian. I mean, to be honest, you could even do that. It's not the end of the world. And you take your fine felting needle and then you're going to, first of all, stab into um, that area under the head where the wire po pokes out because you want to keep it nice and round. So stop in there first and tuck the wispy fibers in. I think I showed something like that with the last with the dragonfly fairy because I showed you how to make the head because it was a new technique. So you, um, you fairy subscribers, you will have done this last time. The only difference is that this head is even a little bit smaller because the fairies are even a little bit tinier than dragonfly fairy was last time. So very dainty little fairies. I'm gonna stop that down. Um, so there you go. And then you're going to um, then you're going to assess if it's big enough. If it's not big enough, you add a little bit more. Mine looks perfect. Remember, with these fairies, you only need about one quarter of the um, the ball facing forward um, to look um, perfect. And then what you're going to do um, next is you cut off a 15 centimeter length from the end of the wire. So there's my head on here there. From the other end you cut 15 centimeter off on, oh dear, guess what? My pliers are at the other desk again. I've got to use my scissors. Use pliers if you've got pliers, unless you've got some grotty old scissors, scissors that you don't need anymore. 15 centimeters and then you're going to uh, wrap the arms. This is going to be the arms with a really wispy end of the wool again. This time you have to be really neat. So make sure that you make a really thin cover and nice and tight. So work really close to the wire, then bend the wire in. So you've got that bend is covered with a pink. It's hard to see, I think. And then you continue wrapping the wool around that bend and along the wire and you uh, can you see how I'm pulling it tight every time, like really tight when I'm get when I'm close to the wire, and I'm going to about the middle of it. I'm not going all the way across. Tease this wool out if it gets too thick. Just tease it out and keep the uh, layer nice and thin. Going roughly to the middle, bearing in mind that I need to bend the wire in by about half a centimeter, so not too much. So it, it's only roughly the middle. And I have too much wool here, so I'm going to have to take some off in a minute. I'll do that now. Just tease a little bit off and uh, make sure that you really secure the end well. So keep wrapping it right to the last tiny single fiber. So you've got a nice tight um, finish there. 
I've got a bit of a fluff there, but that's that's not the end. And then um, you do the same on the other side for the arms. So start off with a really thin layer, just one centimeter in. Bend the ar the, the bend, bend the wire around. Continue going over it with your wool tight. Keep it tight. Work your way up the arm and keep going round it. Really tight. You can, again, you can turn it round and do it this way. Um, so twist the pipe, the twist the wire rather than the um, wrapping the wool. Take a bit off. Finish off really, really well. So you've got absolutely no fibers um, escaping. So now I've got a set of arms, basically, with a bit of a gap in the middle, um, like that. And um, well, what happens next? I'm going to put these now around my um, the fairy's um, main wire coming down from the head. And to do this, I'm literally twisting the arms around the main wire. And what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that um, these arms are obviously the same same length now. So undo the twist and just adjust it a little bit if need be. And then you can push them up. So if they're not up yet, push them up. And now you've got the uh, choice to make either longer or shorter legs. And for the shorter legs, you cut off um, 15 centimeters. For the longer legs, you cut off 18. And I've got to use my scissors again. Sorry, guys, if that's making you really cringe. <clears throat> and then you uh, repeat this for the legs now. But this time with the legs, you're going all the way across. So you're not leaving the middle bit um, uncovered. So start at one end. Bend the wire in. Same as before. Continue along the wire. Same as before. Keep it nice and tight. I'm going to speed this up a little bit now because I know I can do this faster, but when you're doing it, you're obviously probably doing this a lot slower. Um, if you're if the first layer is really, really thin, you can go over it again. So um, it doesn't have to stay that thin. Like um, my first layer of the leg is really thin, so I'm going to go over it again. I tease it to keep the same thickness. And for this one, I'm actually going all the way across all the way across, all the way across, if I can. It's just so that I keep wrapping it in the same direction and covering the end, bending it in, and then I've got to go back over it again. So keep wrapping it in the same direction so that you don't unwrap what's underneath it and you're just keeping a tight, putting a tighter layer over the top. That means you always have to remember which side you started. So I'm, I'm in the right direction here again because I started at that end. So I'm just giving it another little layer to make the legs less thin. But you can keep them really thin as well. Oh, my wool is coming apart. I have to get back to that part here. Come on, winding it in. There we go. So now I can build up another bit of layer onto that leg. Still very thin at the ankle, but go back again. Okay, that's going to be the end here. And if you have bits um, sticking out, you can use your fine needle and just go over it. Um, that's absolutely fine. You just have to be really, really careful not to break your needle. And you might have to sort of just continuously keep turning it. So if you if you stab into it, um, stab into it in really short, shallow little stabs and keep turning it. And then you might have to go in from the back again because you will have pushed the fiber through, through the other end and just keep returning it, uh, keep repeating it. But with your fine needle, you should be able to get a nice tight wrap on there. So that are the legs. And then um, you remember, you need to have the arms up here. And now you're putting, fastening the legs onto um, the, the, the main body wire. But this time you're actually wrapping the body wire around the legs. And this should be sort of two and a half to three centimeters away from the head. It's usually the same distance as the head is big, um, or it could be a little bit more. So just keep going in and out um, or in and around the legs 
um, till you can tidy the rest of the wire away along the body of the fairy and then obviously bend the legs in so you get a good feel for that where you are with this. So you've got your fairy skeleton almost ready now and now we need to add um, wool to it. Now with a girl you're going to add um, you're going to add pink straight away. With a boy you're going to stick with with uh, this flesh pink for um, just just to get the um, the um, wire covered up and make sure that the legs and the arms have got have got um, a nice a nice securing layer on there. So I'm going around the legs and around the body, just build it up um, a little bit, and definitely with the arms so that they don't keep flopping around. So use thin layers of that pink wool and you can bend the arms out of the way, bend the legs out of the way, just put a little, just a, a first layer onto the body, go over the arms to um, cover them up as well, there, around the body, and then go over the other arm. Just work with a small quantities, add more if need be, um, but it's always a golden rule, start out small and then add more if need be until you've got a sort of a, a, a very small body here and then um, felt this down a little bit. I, I really love this stage of the fairies because they're starting to uh, take shape like a little like a little body and it's really sweet to um, to see it all come into life that way. And the next thing you're going to do is with um, the with the blue fairy you're now going to go onto the green wool tops. Now these green wool tops are quite important. You do need them for the um, for the hair. You need them for the underskirt, and you also mix it into um, the blue wool. So take be careful that how you split it. Take it from the side. Um, I would at, at all points because then, then you've got a lot of scope to still use the rest. You have a choice of mixing the colours, um, you know, picking the colours you want to. And what you're going to do now is you're going to add more body by wrapping this wool top around the boy. And you're also going to wrap this around the top parts of his legs. So you're giving him little shorts. And Secure that before you um, start the next leg. So you're giving him, oh, I've got my needle stuck in the wire there. Um, so you're giving him a little, almost like a little, um, what are they called, these suits? Um, it's like a leotard, isn't it? Is that what it's called? I think so. So stab all that in for now. And then um, take another strand. I need a little bit less this time because I've got got the leg to do. I don't need to build the body up a bit more. Bend, bend the bits out of the way that you find they're getting in the way. Make similar pair of leggings on the other side. And then he's got stripy one on one side and not stripy ones on the others. On the other, that's fine. If you've gone a bit too far down and just push it up by felting it up, you can do that too. You'll see a little bit of that. Um, you're not going to see much of the lower part of the of this particular fairy, because um, he's he's got or she has whatever whatever they're going to be in your in your fairy world um, has got um has got um, a, a sort of a dress or a tunic or whatever you want to call it over it, and then you have to give him sleeves in the same way. So use whatever color you want because that will be visible. So uh, be mind mindful of what you're using. I'm going to use oh, let's use the really nice light green, and then do this on his upper arms, giving him little sleeves. They're so much fun to make. You love it. I love um, I love when they when you can pose them into different positions. It always reminds me of yoga positions, and then go around this on the other side. There's no real um, sort of concept of how you need to wrap this. Just so that just know that by the end of it, it needs to look neat. Um, so I need a little bit more on 
this side here. Why does it need to go there? There we go. Right, and then felt that down as well. So you're just fastening it on. It's really important that you do this with a, you'd give him the pink body underneath first because um, this, this flat wool top is not going to build bulk very much and it also felt much better into the body underneath rather than using it just as the, all of that as the base shape. Um, and then if you've got bits that you need to cover up, just do that afterwards. It's got a little white, a little uh, pink showing here. So I'm just going to cover that up there and then felt it down. So basically you're dressing him, um, giving him shorts and short sleeves and dressing his whole body in this green wool top. If you, if you pick all the same color, then that's fine. The lower part of it you will hardly see and the upper part <clears throat> um, will be visible more. So um, however you want to make this uh, look, the, the thing about the Love in the Mist, they have got these really wispy uh, green spindly things sticking out. So I quite like it that it already kind of looks that way. So then uh, the, the, the last thing you, that you need to do is you're going to have to mix the, um, the blue and the green together. This is only for the boy that you're doing this um, in that way that this this will be his top coat. The pink one will also have blue, uh, will also have green and uh, um, pink mixed which will be her underskirt and then she has got a, a total just plain pink top skirt. But for him you need to mix the blue with the green. So and we want this to be quite um, how can I say, quite unmixed. You want this to be quite stre streaky. Don't mix it too much because these green fibers, they are, they literally look a little bit like the, the spiky bits that the flowers have got. So keep it relatively unmixed. And then you're going to lay this, lay this onto him like that. Felt it down. I know this is a, a bit of a longer tutorial, but this is basically showing you from beginning to end how to make one of the fairies out of the Love in the Mist fairy. And I, I've literally got five minutes left of the live stream and I've literally got two minutes left to finish him off. Felt this down at the front, one part, and then felt the other part down at the back. So you're letting it spill into his upper, upper body, but not covering it entirely. But it, it is sort of a wispy transition between the upper body and the um, the sort of skirt or whatever you want to call it. You're felting onto him. And um, if you need to shorten that because you want to expose more of his legs, you can tear wisps off. You can even cut it off and then wisp it um, up again by, um, by sort of teasing fibers out of it. There you go. And so you could you could just tear tiny bits of wool off. So just be careful that you don't tear the whole thing off if you if you want his legs to be exposed more. Um, you could also just cut it short. Um, I do have some good scissors here as well. So you could cut it short. You could also cut into it like a hairdresser cuts into hair in a, at an angle and then take the wispy ends out. So there are different ways of shortening um, his his top there. And, um, and then finally, you're using that green wool again, and this is what I love about it. You're just making the hair with that as well. So take a wisp off, a couple of wisps, and then you just uh, shape this in, 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 into a, a wig, basically, however you want this to be. I quite like it that the, we're doing this the other way this time. So normally we have the folded bit at the front, but this time we're actually doing it the other way. Felt it down. It needs to be really wild. It needs to be wispy. So give him a, um, a wild hairdo. Um, and remember that he's going to have um, a, that dried flower on his head. And of course, if you want to give him a face, then you can give him a face. We have got tutorials on our playlist on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can uh, you can definitely look that up 
if but it also tells you in the instructions of how to do it but if you need to see it done then you can and just keep it like he's he's sort of a bit of a a wild boy or a wild girl you do the same for the girl and then you've got your little love in the mist fairy there you've got your dried flowers in your pack take them out and um you can put well i've put i've put the I've put the blue obviously onto the onto the boy um, and I've put it at a slight angle a bit like a like a berry and all you need for that is a dab of glue put it on his head where the, the uh, flower is going or put it on the flower doesn't really matter dab it on, dab it on and there you go you've got a you've got now you've got already a whole set there you've got an extra one and um, and that is basically how the little how one of the little love in the mist fairies is made. There you go. And then you can pose their arms and they can they can hang out and they can have their arms up in the air and they can um, do all kinds of things, whatever you want them to do. Skip, dance, run, run into your arms, run into each other's arms, all of that. 